are today. Yeah, I mean, the Grace did a great job last game, actually, keeping mo both of her carries alive for so long during these team fights. The multiple um, heals that came from her ultimate once she picked up the Echo meant that Baron could survive for longer and longer. With a Black Feather, also synergized as well, because when Black Feather goes in, the Grace can heal him for the backline. SK taking the Vox away from Clash. Uh, again, just in case Clash was thinking of running that CP Black Feather with the Vox in the lane. Now it's likely to push this Black Feather a little bit more towards the lane. Uh, as obviously, Clash could still go for something like the Gwen or, you know, there, there's a couple other weapon laners that they could look for, but it's likely to be in the lane for the Black Feather. But the Alpha for Tires, once again, wasn't able to have the, much impact in game number one. But maybe now in game three, without that you know heavy, heavy sustain of a Samuel Lyra, they're going to be able to have more success with it. They're going to want to put the Black Feather in the jungle as a CP. I would expect them to pick up Petal, Weapon Power, and Lane. That being said, I think they would not have too much trouble putting Black Feather and Lane himself. Vox doesn't really hard counter him. Yes, it's a soft counter. It can play against it. It's a skill matchups though. So Black Feather can still outplay the Vox and can still come out ahead in that matchup. 15 seconds left on the Clash timer here, and they're going to go for the Baron <laughs> themselves. They want to take this one to the late game. But definitely with an Alpha and a Vox, they, there's the potential for SK to really put the pressure on during the early stages and deny Clash getting to that late game. Yeah, alpha, Vox, and then you have Lyra in the late game to portal the team onto mm -hmm. a Baron and drop a Bulwark. If you portal and Bulwark onto a Baron, he can no longer jump away. He can, If he's in the process of jumping when the Bulwark goes out, the jump will go through and will block it because of the crowd control denial. But if the jump has not started yet, you cannot begin a jump if you are in a Bulwark. So this is a pick that could be very risky for Clash. Yeah, indeed. I mean, Clash will have to pressure the early game, uh, or SK will have to pressure the yeah. early game so that Baron, once he scales... He doesn't, or he's not able to scale in the first place so that they can shut him down. The the, the portal into the jump jets, it's a very interesting uh, dynamic because Black Barons can still jump when they see the portal come out. There's a very split second decision uh, window that they can make out to get out of the bulwark before it goes down. Some players are able to do that. I remember Best Chuck is one of the more renowned players for it in North America, able to do it consistently. Whoever knows, maybe Marcellus has been practicing him. We'll have to see. I mean, these games have been going incredibly long in this series. And with a Baron locked in, you expect that Clash want that to continue to be the case here. I want to talk a little bit about the early game. Are we expecting that this is going to be an elevator comp where you try and ramp that Baron as fast as possible? Or are we expecting Clash to kind of just sit back and allow SK to have the early game so that they can try and draw it out? There's probably going to be a bit of that l slower buildup because they have the grace on their side as well, it's just going to mean that the Grace and the Black Feather, like they're waiting for all of these to come online. You're waiting for the Echo, you're waiting for the level 8 on Black Feather. All right, we'll see if they can get to those power spikes. We'll see if they can pull themselves this series. Hashtag Vainglory8. Let us know whether you want SK to finish off this series or if you believe in the Clash upset. It's time to pass it back over to our casters. It's Medic and Denominate for game number three. Thank you very much, Munch. I am joined by Denomine as we get into the third game of the series. A game that I don't think many people would have predicted would even happen coming into the semi-finals today. I think everyone thought SK, you know, they take the 2-0 over Clash, they go through to the finals, they look dominant as they always have done, but Clash here have put up such a strong performance and given us almost an hour's game time over the first two games. Yeah, I think everybody would have expected SK to come into this one and just take a clean 2-0 over Clash. That was not the case, and Mercilli's now picking up this Baron Agony. Gonna be in the jungle on the Black Feather. Oh, and disowned Tyra's, solo! Oh, oh. Disowned! <laughs> you can just see him giggling in the face of SK there, like, yep, I just did that right into the midst of your team, stole away the Elder Treant, and SK with that front-to-back start have been put behind by Disowned. Someone needs to, to help disown and unlock the charms for him. <laughs> <laughs> but Agony on the Crystal Black Feather going to be able to provide a serious amount of poke damage. But Tyra's back on the Alpha here. Saw the Samuel make short work of the Alpha because of the kite potential the Samuel has. It's, it's not the same matchup. I think in the uh, kind of brawler kind of style fight that we're going to have here. It should be Tyra's coming out over Agony in most of these fights, 
but Marsilius should be able to out-trade more damage than Cavalifar. So I'd expect this one to be a very close and very long game as well. Both teams have a healer as well. Lyra obviously going to capitalize on that early and mid-game healing, but the Grace, once the Divine Intervention is online and we get that Echo for the double Divine Intervention, Disown is going to be able to provide so much additional sustain for the team. I could even depending on how long this game goes, I could side with maybe getting some crystal power as well, just to give a bigger burst to those heals, to allow Mercilles to stay alive all that much longer, as now Agony is rotating up into the lane, but I don't know if they're going to be able to find anything realistic on Kvalifar. Or poke than anything else you have to expect. Mercilles pushes up the lane as well, but Hegman here to help out his laner, and it's not really much found, but nothing really as well for Agony to do. You know, none of his camps are up. His backs have only just respawned. He'll go back, to, uh, pick up another crystal bit to complement the two he already has, and then go back to uh, farming his jungle. You have to expect Tyrus is around mid as well, but he uh, is going to be able to take his backs and just uh, just get back to the Elder Tree. It might actually even take that one away before Clash can realize anything is going on. So. Good play by SK to be able to secure the second Elder Triumph for themselves. Evens, and evens it out as a one-for-one -one score. Neither team really with a strong advantage early on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, this is going to be all about the late game. Vox can potentially out-trade Mercilius here, right? So the breaking point that Cavalifar is going to be able to build up as well as he's going to be able to afford defense in his build, it's it's going to allow him to scale up pretty easily on Disowned and Agony. Oh man, Agony almost finds one in Cavalifar. He's going to make it out alive. He's already used that flask, so that's important to make note of as well, uh, as Mercilius and Disowned have used their flask, so Tyrus could be really aggressive here. Jumps all the way onto Mercilius, can't quite take him out. Now Disowned is the new target, but Disowned gets that shield, of course, and can just back himself away. Mercilius will have to go back and heal himself up, but considering he had 2,000 gold in his back pocket, he won't be too worried about that. Gets himself a heavy steal and a six sins, and will come back towards the lane once again. Still neither team able to really break the other yet, but we are only four minutes in. Maybe we'll break the 40-minute mark this game, Denomina, you never know. Hey, hey, I'm all down for it. To see two teams that evenly matched for that amount of time, that is a good showing of mistakes made as well as the positive plays made. So, you know, there's a lot that a lot of different teams even can learn from that kind of experience. They can go in and there's a lot to study on other teams' rotations because there's just so much of it. You can see what teams are going to make different rotations and what circumstances as Kavalafar, uh, you know, up here in the lane has gone with the Poison Shiv first item. I, there's not a whole lot to be gained off that. That is a very common first item for the box. It gives them sustain in the lane as well as will reduce the healing that Disowned is able to put in the late game and I just I don't think there's really room in a Baron's build for a poison chip because you're going for that raw burst damage so there's not really going to be as much of a way to shut down the healing coming out of Hegman. One of the, the major difficulties for them and the healing from Disowned will be shut down pretty easily by Cavalifier and that poison chip you can see already the mortal wounds comes out Tyrus gets a bit of an engage off but not able to do too much more. Looks like Agony's going to come up. He hasn't completed that first crystal power item, but has an Eclipse Prism and a Heavy Prism sitting in his back pocket, so those on points will start to hurt. As you can see, Hegman just heals him up with the Imperial Sigil, and SK, especially in this point of the game, will be pretty happy if they take these prolonged trades, because they have that extra healing before Disown does get that Divine Intervention and the Echo. Virus has gone for the Aftershock now, so maybe see SK forcing a fight soon. Could see them just wait this one out a little bit more as well, though. Yeah, they definitely should look for some aggression here pretty soon. Agony is not at level 8 yet. He doesn't have the overdrive on his on point, as well as Hegman has the fountain available and disown. Well, disown is just now rotated to get it. But here comes Tyra's. Can they find a pick here? Agony's coming down. On point goes out onto Kavalafa. The bright bulwark used as well. Agony jumping on towards his Elder Treant. Does manage to secure it. Gonna turn back on towards Tyrus. Great Holy Nova with a knock at Mercilius. Puts the Ion Cannon down from the side, but Tyrus is able to run away with those boots. Agony looking for that second burst offensive. Could go through Tyrus here, but he has got the infinite reboot and the termination protocol. There he goes forward. There's the termination protocol. Turning it back around. Mercilius jumps all the way in. Dodges the prime directive. Superbly well. And now they're gonna turn on to Tyrus. The double Holy Nova with a knock up. And up there. Tyrus still alive as he comes back out through the heroic perk. But the wait for it is not enough. They've already lost one. 
SK now need to run away because Masillas is on a rampage. He's jumping forward into Cabalapa, who gets one, but gets taken out by Disowned in response. Agony now trying to get away. Both the Romans just doing what they can to clean up this fight, but I think Agony should escape from Hegman here. The Crystal Sentry coming forward as well. No Arcane Passive for Hegman will mean that Clash should take a two-for-one trade in the jungle. Yeah, Clash starting it off early here. Agony had a great performance there, and he's actually going to get that Treant, which is going to allow him to heal up enough to take these backs, as well as give the Ambient Gold over to Mercilles. And now he might look to take one more camp, and then probably going to recall to top his health off. Be a little bit risky if he rotates over into Tyra. So, yep, there's the recall. Going to go ahead and shop. He is level 8 now. He has the extended range and on point, and he has the Shatter Glass. And this is really where the Black Feather spike begins. But again, the poke is not going to be... Uh, a consistent damage source and less of it's getting onto Kavalafar. It's not as effective onto Tyrus, who is that tanky frontline. So if he's able to light it up right, he can get the damage through multiple targets, but one of those targets has to consistently be Kavalafar. Both teams settled into the lane for the time being. A 300 gold lead for SK is not insurmountable in any way for Clash. Today we are starting to see those first items being picked up across the board. Pyro's with the Aftershock, and Kavalapa actually got two items now with the Poison Shiv and the Breaking Point, so he is going to be able to stack up through these fights. We've seen how effective he can be. Game 1, his Black Feather was incredibly strong when he got those Breaking Point stacks, and Vox even easier to build them up with. So, all eyes on the Vox coming into these next two team fights. That's SK's win condition, and the win condition for Clash has to be to shut down Kavalafar, one of the main carries for SK. Consistently a strong laner. Needs to be caught out, captured by Clash if they're going to take a 2 1 in this series. Yeah, Kavalafar easily capable of running this box in Baron and having a decent amount of a success. Now, the Baron will outrange Kavalafar, specifically the more points he puts into his ultimate, and it does increase his basic, basic attack range, but they have to use that to their advantage if they allow the side of SK to dive in, and, and the Bright Bulwark is a beautiful example of how they can do so. We can get the Arcane Passage in, drop the Bright Bulwark, and for a couple seconds, Mercilles is not going to be able to use his Jump Jets to make that escape. And that's going to allow Tyra's and Cavalifar to start building up that damage on the Brasilis. Exactly what they want. Disown jumps in, double Holy Nova knock up, but Clash were not in the position to follow it up. The Mortal Wounds is hitting onto Disown, and look at him, he's getting shredded even with the Healing Flask. Doesn't use the Fountain Iron Cannon from Mercilis in case the dive continued, but it's a big ultimate down. Disown down in health as well, and those bounces are starting to hurt onto Clash. Cavalifar pushing forward for this turret here. Tyra's takes a poke. Stone jumps in, Cavalfa's going to take a Porcupine Mortar, but they don't do too much. Kurosid will heal up all of SK, that healing more reliable than the healing coming out from Disowned. Doesn't have the Echo, only one Divine Intervention available for him. Steps forward once again, here comes Agony with a flank, but not able to make a catch at all really, and Clash are so reliant on a good engage, a good Holy Nova really, to get them into these fights, because apart from that they have no crowd control. The jump comes in as the turret falls. Good play by SK to get the first toad of the game. Yeah, they're definitely taking advantage where they have it. Alpha has this strong mid-game spike starting up, and it's consistent bursts of damage uh, using the core charge to proc that aftershock onto a target. And now disowned, you know, he has the Atlas Pauldron available that is going to be a nice utility for getting on to Kavalafar, slowing down his attack speed, and that's going to prevent him from building up breaking point stacks freely in a fight and allow Agony and Mercilles more time to get the damage in. Now, Mercilles has gone into a monocle and working into his second one, and what we saw out of Kavalafar last game was he built the tension bow very early and then eventually went into a bone saw. And the armor breaker does not stack on those two items, so he should have gone one or the other, and it may have made it a little bit easier to close out the games. Uh, I specifically think that, uh, you know, dropping the tension bow would have been the right path to go as we. See right there, a big shot coming through and the Arcane Passage is in. Tyrus takes a lot of damage in response, so the wait for it does come out. Tyrus having to jump out of this fight. The Iron Cannon used a bit of a misposition there as well, but Tyrus was the one who was chunked at the start of that fight. Still no fountain used by either team, so they do have that available if the re-engage happens, but SK willing just to stay back a little bit further. 
clear out that wave and then go back and try and get some vision control around the uh, Clash jungle. Definitely looking to do so. This Baron is getting to the point that he's coming online. He's taking the opportunity now to recall and get that second monocle built. And Agony has gone into a second Shatter Glass. And now, while this will provide a decent amount of burst, it is heavily countered by shield being built. So we'll have to see if Cavalifar recognizes that and sells off this flask after the next time he uses it. He should sell it off and start working into a kinetic shield or a reflex block at least. See if he does do that, but still, SK in the driver's seat in this game. Not too far ahead, but a thousand gold is nothing to be sniffed at. They once again just do this rotation. They're very happy just to continually wait this one out. Do the rotation, come back, start the gold miner up. Those infusions ticking as well. Flash with only an infusion on Massilis need to be a little bit cautious as to how they approach this fight, especially since it's only a level 9 infusion, but the zone jumps in. The rest of SK go the other way. There's the way for it as well, and already we see the kill onto Massilis. They pull the trigger immediately. Snipe down that Baron, and now Disown is in the midst of SK. There's the Prime Directive. It's a double for Tyrus. They'll take the Crystal Sentry as well, and they can go back towards that gold miner if they want. Kabalafar looking to chase Agony out of his jungle. Takes away the Treant, takes away the backs, takes away basically everything. A great engage from SK and a game-defining fight you have to feel. Yeah, definitely was a key capitalization from SK there. They bring the lead up 3-2, to two, but this game has still looked very even. I do give the edge over to SK in these fights. Their positioning is near perfect uh, for that last one at least. And now with the gold mine payout, they are going to take a 3,000 gold lead. And I think this is really where SK needs to start to push an advantage while they have it. Um, Kvalifar does have the Sorrow Blade complete now, as well as building into that Metal Jacket, and they are going to be able to kite around this Black Feather. As long as Tyros and Kvalifar are not standing in a line, that's going to make it very difficult for Agony to dish out the damage that he needs to on this Crystal Mage Black Feather. Echo finished for Hegman as well, so he can look for double Arcane Passage, double Bright Bulwark, double Imperial Sigil if you want that extra healing as well. A lot of different opportunities for him. Double Shatter finished on Agony, so he's looking for the pure arrow damage on the CP Black Feather, but hasn't really been able to land a poke where he wants it. There's the first Imperial Sigil going down. The Holy Nova misses. Bright Bulwark used as well, but good poke on Skavalapon once again. Does chunk him out a little bit. The 3,000 gold lead for SK, and if these fights, if it's just an engage, disengage, then SK seem to be in the advantage because they have this Lyra, because they have that consistent healing. His own has got an echo of his own, so he'll be looking for those divine interventions. Kavalafar with a flank, going for Massilis, just needs that damage on the back line to jump in. The Arcane Passage brings Tywas back into the midst of the team. Agony there as well, trying to get the Rose Offensive away, but the chase from Tywas is impressive. And SK get another kill for themselves. They're going to go for the Crystal Sentry as well to secure that second one of the game. Leave it with only one life remaining, and perhaps the amount of lives that Flash have as well, as they are looking like they are in a bad, bad position here against SK. Yeah, definitely looking rough, and you know, could specifically see in that last fight how ineffective Agony is to Tyros. He landed two on points onto Tyros directly and barely tickled him. And you know, now that the Metal Jacket is complete for Kavalafar, it makes it very difficult for Mercilles to come in and actually get return damage because of the changes onto um, the way armor and shielding work. Kavalafar just doesn't take the burst coming out of Mercilles that we would hope. Now, Mercilles does appear to be building into a breaking point that could help ramp the damage up and get past the uh, Metal Jacket. But we really need to see some Pierce come out of our sillies, and we really need to see... I, I honestly don't even like the second Shatter Glass. I, I would have liked to see a Shatter Glass, a Dragon's Eye, and a Broken Myth on Blackfeather. It's just too difficult for him to be a damage threat at this point. Well, the Dragon's Eye is finished on towards Tyra's, so you have a Dragon's Eye somewhere in the game, at least, Denominate. The SK now very much in the, the front seat of this game. The driver's seat, you might say, as Agony looks to try and poke him with the on point, but... They're cracking up, they're getting vision control as much as they can. They can 
push forward and try and take out this final crystal sentry as well and Clash not really able to respond to this one. Here comes Disowned in with the Holy Nova, but that's not going to connect onto anyone. The Iron Cannon used as well. Ty was there. The wait for it comes out. The silence is going to land on the Hegman as they jump into the back line. The Bright Bulwark absolutely huge with the Divine Intervention. The healing from the fountains is big enough. Not bad enough to heal up Mestilis. And with that Crystal Sentry going down, Agony is going to fall as well. It's a double. SK are going to get the ace here and clean up this fight. They'll look for the Kraken as well. SK with a great team fight looking to close this game out quickly. Yeah, and this is looking more and more like SK's game with every single instance that we have. There's just not a whole lot that Clash at this point can actually do to contest. I mean, Tyros has a metal jacket, Kavalifar has a metal jacket, the healing coming out of Hegman. He even has an echo here on the Lyra to help the team sustain or, you know, can use it on that bulwark as well. And that's going to keep Mercilles from escaping the damage as well as prevent Agony from using his Faint of Heart or his Rose Offensive. And now Kraken is taken with three turrets between SK and a victory. If they can find the kills onto Mercilles and onto Agony here, they can end the game on this one last push. If Clash is able to hold out, if they're able to take the Kraken down and find an ace of their own, they very well may be able to turn this game around. But Kavalifar is not even going into any shielding now. He's just going into a fourth offensive item on Vox because they've been so dominantly ahead and he's relying so much on Hegman for the healing. And with the Kraken push in, you feel that SK are just a couple of minutes away, perhaps a couple of moments away, one team fight away from Securing that spot in the finals once again. The jump in with the arcane passes. They just keep going on to Mercillas, but he will get out this time. There's a wait for it used as well. That first turret is going to fall as the Kraken pushes in. The iron cannon used. His own jumps forward. There's the Imperial Sigil for the healing. Tyra's down to about half HP, and maybe SK will realize that this is not the best time for them to be fighting, but they can keep pushing in if they want. Disown jumps forward. There's a Bright Bulwark used once again. The Holy Nova is going to land only onto Tyra's. That Kraken very low, but so is the turret. SK. Now, do back away. Agony looking for a little bit of a chase as the zone jumps in with the benediction. They're not going to be able to get too much more out of that. Kraken falls, only one turret goes down, but some good damage on towards that crystal turret. And they have broken that choke point towards the base of Clash. Yeah, and that's such a key turret to have down. It's now so much distance that Clash would need to run back to get to the safety of their base. Obviously, with the uh, Bane Crystal Turrets being further down in the base, they don't really provide you any defense of getting back to that fountain, as it's just SK finding fight after fight at this point. Kavalifar is able to dance around Agony and, you know, not taking any return punishment for their aggressive tactics. And Tyra's is able to just get in and continuously spam out that Aftershock proc. And then as that Dragon's Eye builds up, that Prime Directive with the three stacks of Core Overload is so potent. It's, it's almost like a second ultimate. It does so much damage. And SK, they're only up seven to two as far as the kills go, but they're up four and a half thousand gold. Every single fight has looked in their favor. They might not have found ace after ace after ace, racking up a massive amount of kills, but even when they don't get the kills, they have forced Clash so far back that they can't do anything about it. Tyra's is going in on Agony here. Again, those on points just do nothing. Arcane Passage straight onto the back line as well. That's the wait for it, and already Mercilis is there. These Arcane Passages have been absolutely beautiful. Two kills down, disown the last one standing. I've said that many a time this game. He's gonna fall as well. And SK will be able to close out the game. Such a dominant performance from them here in game three. First two games, a lot more scruffy, but this game will be closed out pretty easily. And the SK will be going through to the finals later on today. Yeah, they absolutely will. And this looked like a totally different team than we saw in game number one or game number two. They're able to pull it out though in a 20 minute game. No, no 40 minute game here today yet medic but maybe later we can get one of those blessings as sk they go ahead and they secure a second point today as well as moving on to the finals awards them a bonus two points so if g2 wants to stay in the running we talked about it earlier they're only four points down they need to win and make it to the finals today great great stuff all around we're gonna hand it back across towards our